The most infuriating question I get is, how do I become the next Joe Rogan? The second most infuriating question I get is, how do you calculate ROI for a podcast? But that's not really the question. They just want to know, how much money am I really going to make from this thing? Now, I'm going to tell you, but before we do that, we have to talk a little business and we have to talk accounting. So if they ask, anybody asks, hey, what's the ROI of my future podcast? My question for them is, what is your return on investment for your email list? What is your return on investment for your website? What is your return on investment for that post that you made on Instagram? with a quote from the CEO that nobody reads or likes. What is the return on investment? And more specifically, what is the return on capital at your company? Typically, when I ask these questions, there's a lot of, well, actually the email list, it, the people do book calls, and we get down a whole rabbit hole. And that's what I'm saying. It's not simple. It's not a simple equation. And guess what? If I was able to tell you, I would be able to read minds, predict the future. I would have superpowers because nobody understands your business like you do. And if they claim to, they're lying. So how could I claim to understand every single aspect of your business just because I'm the podcast strategist? I shouldn't even know what the true answer to that is because I would be predicting the future. So before we get into the ROI conversation, we have to look at the terms, right? We have to go into accounting and a little bit of finance here. An investment is something we spend money on for a return, right? An expense is that money, right? And then the asset is the thing we have after we expense and spend the money on the thing that gives us the return. The asset is the outcome. So marketing is an investment, right? A podcast is an asset but luckily it's not a depreciating asset. Look at any asset in your business. If you have a company car, if you have any physical object, it's constantly depreciating, but a podcast is not. And especially with the way that we create it, it is evergreen content. So it, it, that content can live for not only years, but decades after that. But let's come back to that conversation. So we have an investment, we have an expense, and we have an asset, right? And let's look at what a podcast falls under. A podcast falls under marketing and in marketing you have investments you have expenses and you have assets right so like your email list is an asset your website is an asset and the podcast is an asset so when we ask how can we figure out the ROI of our podcast we have to look even deeper to say well how are we attributing ROI right now how do we tell where <laughs> there's an actual return and how do we tell that the return came from the place that we think it came from if somebody reads your email list, right? And they stumble across a podcast episode that you promoted on the list. Then they watch the episode. Then they go to your website. Then they book a call. But in the book a call form, they tell you, I came here from the podcast. Well, is that revenue after they close attributed to the podcast, your website, or your email list? Or is it attributed to the social media post that they saw that brought them to the email list that then allowed them to go from the email list to the podcast, to the website, to the book a call, to the salesperson, to then close, then bring in the revenue? So which one is it, right? And that's why this, this question is so complicated. And it doesn't have to be. Here's the thing. If you believe in this, it works. That's the good part about it. Now, that's not the extent of the equation. You obviously also have to have the strategy too, right? There's nothing without a business model without an actual strategy is just hope, right? And most companies I'm pretty sure don't function off of hope. So you're not asking the wrong question by asking how do we figure out the future ROI of our podcast that you're on the right track. But what we really have to know is what do we want the podcast to do for us as selfish as possible, right? For us, for our business. And that's why you see a lot of podcasts that completely suck. It's because nobody asked these questions. Nobody answered the question. If you're creating a B2B podcast about entrepreneurship, yet you own a SaaS company, I'm confused because there's a million other people 
also trying to do the same thing. That's what happened, right? Let's look at 2020. Let's flash back to 2020. The boom of podcasting, 70% more companies launching podcasts. Why did that happen? Well, because it was COVID and everybody was bored. Then in 2023, 90% of those podcasts had already failed. It's because they didn't have a strategy, they were doing it for fun, and they didn't know what they wanted the podcast to do for them. So don't do that. Don't go ahead and create a podcast that's a personal mission disguised as a business strategy. That is hope marketing. That is the opposite of what we do. We don't believe in winging it. We believe in testing, iterating, then launching, right? And we've done this with over 100 shows now, so we know how it works. But if you're looking for dollars and cents, what's the X percentage of ROI on this podcast, then I would personally stick to stock trading or something more numbers based. A podcast is art. It's not just science. It's not just math. It's more so psychology. And if you don't have a good grasp on how somebody finds, you know, your social media post and then your email list and then the website and then the podcast and then there's eight to 12 more touch points and then finally they have the need for what you do and then they buy. If that's not a process that makes sense, if you're more so looking for direct response or hey, we run this ad and then we get this person to buy. A podcast is not that. A podcast is brand. A podcast is art. A podcast is psychology. It's emotion. It's attaching the emotional side of the buyer journey, which every single buyer goes through that because not everything is logic. So there are parts of this that are illogical, that don't directly contribute to a certain percentage of ROI. And that's okay because we know it works. So I appreciate this question always. And I appreciate you joining me on this rant about podcast ROI. We already know the B2B model is flawed. We already know that B2B companies are doing things that don't make any money anyway. So let's look at that. Let's look at the waste. Let's look at if a trade show actually makes sense or let's look at if this, I mean, I don't even know what a white paper is, but if you're doing them, I mean, what does that even do, right? Let's look at everything else that we're doing. To say that a podcast wouldn't make sense is crazy because the modern consumer, they want to learn more about you, about your business on their own terms. And a podcast allows you to do that. So if that makes sense to you, I appreciate you. I have no call to action in this video because I just want to have this open dialogue and conversation about how B2B is changing, about how consumer behavior is changing, about how podcasts are changing, and this is just one way that we do it. So I appreciate you. My name is Ryan Sullivan, and I will catch you next week.